It's Madden NFL 23 on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Miami Dolphins and the Baltimore Ravens next on EA Sports. EA Sports coverage of the NFL on this fine afternoon brings us to historic Baltimore, Maryland and M&T Bank Stadium. Today, we're set for a good AFC matchup between the Miami Dolphins and the Baltimore Ravens. And a welcome in, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gauden, and Charles, so much gets made about offensive comparisons. Here's a matchup where the defenses may just take center stage. Yeah, we're usually talking about guys scoring touchdowns. How about the guys who prevent them and change the momentum of the game when they take the ball away? I love those ball hawks in the secondary. People after my own heart. Here's Jason Sanders now to get this one started. And off we go from M&T Bank Stadium. And he opts to not bring this one out. The first drive will start at the 25. A number eight, Lamar Jackson, trotting onto the field at quarterback, ready to lead this Ravens offense. Early part of his career, defense has really had to focus on his running ability, and they still do. But now, he's turned himself into a true dual-threat quarterback. When he plants his cleats in the ground and turns it loose, good things happen downfield. Right to the air is Jackson, eluding the pressure right. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a halt. Only a couple for him there on the game's first play, and it's second down. Well, you know, paramount for this defense is trying to keep Lamar Jackson somewhat contained when he tries to run. They did a pretty good job of it there. And you know what's so difficult for every defense that has to prepare for Lamar Jackson? You have to think and play at the same time. And I know that sounds like something you're supposed to do, but when you have to think about your assignments against him, it often slows down your feet. You don't move as fast. You've got to be prepared for this guy every step of the way and then try and match his athleticism. And they'll look to avoid an early three and out here on third and four. Now it's Jackson. That's complete. It's Rashad Bateman. And they've got it well across midfield down to the 40 before it's all said and done. That one goes for 29 yards on third down. So opening drive third down, they complete the slant to move the sticks. And ordinarily, it's a high percentage pass when you throw it. And receivers like to run that route because it gets the ball in their hands pretty quickly. Just a couple of quick steps upfield, break towards the middle, the ball should be there, and then they can get to do some work afterwards. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory right at the 40. Here's Jackson to throw. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Andrews. And he'll be hauled down at about the 30-yard line. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. 
A good position to be in here, second and inches. And Jackson throwing once more. They set up the screen for Dobbins. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. It'll be a loss of two on the play. And it makes it third down and two yards to go. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups. And they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. Third and two. Here's Jackson. Open man is Bateman. It's complete. And he will have a Ravens first down as this defense unable to hold. It's a seven-yard game there on third and two. Solid opening drive so far, Charles. They've moved this football into field goal range, but you know that they want to cap this off with six and not three. Absolutely. As one of the better coaches in the league always tells me, on offense, I want to throw body blows all game long and finish it with uppercuts. Well, here are the body blows right now. He's hoping in one uppercut will take care of the end of this drive. Again, Jackson. That's taken in by Duvernay. And he's brought down inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. To throw again on second down, Jackson. And that one his first incompletion in his last six passes. And it's third down. It's been a good opening drive offensively thus far, but you know they don't want to waste it and settle for a field goal attempt after that incompletion. So this is a big play coming up here on third down. Play number nine set to come here on the drive on third and two. Now Jackson. To the end zone, but knocked away and incomplete. Nice back-to-back -back plays defensively. They're stacking momentum now. One incompletion, two incompletion. They're going for more. So Jackson will head to the Ravens' sideline, and on comes Justin Tucker for the field goal try. Tucker's kick is good. And the Ravens strike first at three zip. In the end, the opening drive, Charles does yield points. Maybe not the touchdown that they wanted, though. Yeah, but bottom line, they wanted to get something out of that drive, and they did that. Three points, they won't turn that down at all. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Here is Tua Tungavailoa heading out to lead this Miami offense. The secret to his game and his success, incredible chemistry with each and every one of the guys who catches passes with him. And not only does he ask them to stay after practice or meet him before practice, he actually demands it because he knows if they have that kind of chemistry built up, they will be hard to beat each and every ball game. Tongue of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their own 23. They'll try and start this drive in the air. That's caught by the Notre Dame man. It's Durham Smythe. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. Nice way to start the drive. A gain of 12 and a first down. Good job there to locate his tight end, Charles, in the middle of the field. Yeah, he has good pass-catching abilities, and if they're able to continue to find him here in the early going, I think it'll help out his teammates out on the perimeter. You can take the big shots later if he occupies their attention. From the 34 now, here's first and 10.
First carry for Raheem Mostert. And he'll get what he can up the middle. Three yards. That'll bring up second down. And we're going to get a timeout as they deal with an injured player. And it's Tyreek Hill who is the man that's in some discomfort right now. Well, the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look. And we will take a short break. This a second and seven from the 37. Off a of play action, tongue of Iloa. He's going to drop this underneath to Mostert. And a five yard gain gets him to the 42. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. They'll try and run here with Mostert. And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. But they went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. A couple of first downs on the drive already as they'll go from the 47 now on first down. On play action, here's Tua. That's complete to Mostert out of the backfield. And he goes out of bounds. It looks like right at the 50. Call it a gain of three on the play. And that will bring up second down. From midfield, here's Tua. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have any options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. Here's play number seven on the drive. This is third and seven. Here's Tua. And the Raven pressure too much. Down he goes. Adafi Owe showing off the pass rush skills. In every game we talk about what are going to be the keys as we go into it. Maybe that's a key for their defense today. Pressure the quarterback and make sure you play a good zone defense behind them. And they get their first sack of the contest. Jake Bailey on now to punt here on fourth down. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. Jackson he's got his man it's Andrews well they're unable to convert that into much but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause from the 22 here's second and eight Jackson on the give to Dobbins and he'll be upended here after a pickup of three, getting it out to the 25. What's the deal, y'all? 
And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. From the gun, it's Jackson. He's got the hook up to Odell Beckham. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, they obviously read man coverage their partner. He got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what do you think. Mean by that? Bro, yeah, bro. he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield. Then he curls back inside for the completion. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Jackson now. And that'll be caught by the big tight end, Andrews. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 11 more on that one and another first down. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus. And indeed, he gets enough for the first down. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. And a good run here as he'll rumble all the way down to the 40-yard line. 12 more yards there and another first down. I think the reason that this play is so successful is not just the blocking at the point of attack, but how about the speed at which he takes the handoff? He's in motion already, so he's not coming from a flat start like a running back often is. He's at a full run by the time he gets the football. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory right at the 40. A give up the middle to Dobbins. He'll get this down to the 38. Coming up on second and seven. Here's Jackson. And bringing it in right side here, Beckham. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. 11 more yards there, and this methodical drive continues. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. A good pickup there, 21 yards. Well, that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. They'll run here with Edwards. It'll be a pickup of four, and it brings up second and goal. When we talk about being on schedule, I think they're on schedule after that run, getting it right down there on the doorstep. Maybe even a little bit ahead, because now the defense can't dictate with pressure. They're guessing about where you're going to go. I might come right back at them with the same play, the same set, and see if they can stop them. Second down and goal. Jackson, that is caught. It's Bateman for a Raven touchdown. Two yards on the touchdown there, and they are able to add on to their advantage. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and the lead grows to 10 0. 10 0 the score after one on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Baltimore. It's the Ravens in possession.
Here's Tucker now out to kick this one away. So Miami coming out for their second drive. Nothing for them yet from an offensive standpoint. Down 10 zip as they come up first and 10. They'll start this drive out on the ground. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. Well, I think after that run, the defense is getting back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? Now a play fake. Here's Tonga Vailoa. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. Certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Throwing now is Tunga Vailoa. This one complete to Jalen Waddle. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Couple of Alabama guys there. Two at a waddle for the Miami first. Third and four, he did just enough. And I mean just enough to move the chains. And that's all you're looking for, right? Just want to keep the drive moving. You don't need the big play there. Just get to that marker that you described. And he was able to do just that. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Going to the air, tug of Iloa. Oh, looking for Waddle, but it's intercepted. Picked by Darrell Worley. And the Ravens are going to take possession of the football. Well, that's a drive killer right there. Not a really confident throw either. This one was kind of up for grabs, and it's going to come down the hands of the wrong team. Lamar Jackson marching back onto the field. Last series, the ball never hit the ground. Six to six, touchdown pass, so whatever he did then, do it again, right? Yeah, it reminds me a lot of when I watched the best quarterbacks throw seven on seven, or even routes versus air. They're accurate, the receivers catch it, the ball never touches the ground. Or if you want to take it to basketball, a well-executed fast break, right? Pass, 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 finish at the rim, basket. Yeah, ball never hits the ground there either. After the interception, here's Jackson. Slings it to Anders, and it's complete. The tight end has it. And the tackle going to be made at the 38. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Second down and three. Jackson from the shotgun. That's complete to his receiver, Bateman. And he'll be taken down here just shy of the 30. The start for them near flawless. Defense gets him a three and out. Two quick pass connections on offense. So that's how a team works together. Just what you described. Get them the ball, give them a little momentum, and they're capitalizing off of that. Thanks a lot, guys. Now Jackson on first down. Steps away to his left. He finds his man complete. It's Flowers. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. That's good for a Raven first down, 15 yards there. That is definitely what we call our defense an uh-oh play. And what you mean by that is against Lamar Jackson, when you see him out of the pocket, your first thought is, uh-oh, he's going to try and run it. How do I get to him and get him on the ground? And guess what? That didn't happen, and his receivers took advantage. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. 
They'll run up the gut with Dobbins. And score that one for one of the league's best. Jalen Ramsey getting the tackle for loss. On running plays, linemen, of course, have their assignments. That's expected. But it's not often you're expecting to see a cornerback blitzing in run support and tackling the runner for a loss. So a step in the wrong direction. Now they'll look to make amends on second and 14. Throwing is Jackson. Rolling to his right. He finds his man complete. That's Flowers. So the completion gets him just a yard. And that's going to lead to a third and 12. We'll see what they have drawn up here. A little bit behind the line. 12 yards needed to gain a first down. On third down, Jackson looking for Bateman. He's got him complete. And he's going to come up well shy of the first here as the tackle's made right around the 12. It'll go down as a gain of six. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. That pattern and scheme was well defensed on third down. He tried to just sprint from one side of the field to the other, and they got it to him quickly. But no chance at yards after the catch there, and they stop him short. So Jackson will head to the Ravens sideline, and on comes Justin Tucker for the field goal try. From the left hash should be a fairly easy one here. Tucker's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. Well, they already had the early lead, and they get the interception, Charles, and now they add three more with the field goal. Yeah, they're in control of how this game is playing out so far. You mentioned the early lead. Now they're expanding on it, getting plays on both sides of the ball. A winning recipe if they can keep this up. Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. And this will be a touchback. Berrios deciding not to bring it out. And out come the Dolphins now. As the offense comes out here, Charles, uh, maybe perhaps a bit more of a focus on the run game for this drive after tossing an interception on the previous one. I think that's a good way to look at it and a good way to think about it, but maybe they get to it in a little bit different way because after you throw an interception, you want to make sure you keep your quarterback's confidence high. So maybe give him a couple easy throws that he can complete and then get to the running game and try and get things settled down. Yeah, and still in the first half here, a long way to go. He's going to air one out for Anderson, and that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. I usually hesitate when I say a guy's got world-class speed but this guy might. So let's fire the starter's pistol. Let's go. If you've got him, you've got to try and use him. A lot of anticipation with the ball in the air, but no, incomplete. Back to the air on second down, Tongue of Iloa. That's caught Waddle on the left side. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. Some think that teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them, and they run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. And he finds Tyler Croft. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Yeah, these are the types of plays they're going to need to hit on if they're going to get back into this game. It hasn't been the greatest of first halves, but this is a nice throw here on third down, and they keep the drive going. On first down, Tonga Vailoa. And hauled in by Croft. It's a big play there for Miami. 48 yards. 
it's not often that you'll find offensive and defensive guys that'll agree on much, but one place they find common ground, you've got to protect or attack the middle of the field. And no one was there. What a big play moving it downfield. Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. Here's Mostert. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. This is a critical sequence here for this offense. Things really haven't gone their way so far. This could be their chance to get back into it, but they've got to find a way to punch this ball in. On second and goal, Tua. To the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. Only three yards there on the completion. That'll lead to a third and goal. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. Ike's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd went to ballet school, got the toes down, and stayed in bounds. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. Great defense there on third and goal. They took away everything, forced him to fire that one to the sideline where no one could get it. So fourth down, Tua departs, and on is Jason Sanders and the Dolphin field goal unit. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. The kick by Sanders is good. And they will indeed get on the board here, but still trailing. It's now 13 to 3. So a long drive gets him down inside the five, but ultimately they settle for just the field goal. And I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer, that would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. From the 10. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. And Baltimore's offense set for this next possession. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize, like going to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. Throwing now, Jackson on first down. The Dolphins get there this time, and they bring him down. Jalen Phillips, the former first rounder, getting in there for the sack. And we all know how talented this guy is who's calling the signals for him. But even the best in the game, they can struggle against a good, cohesive zone coverage. Can't find a gap in the secondary quick enough, and he ends up taking a sack. Following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Jackson. And his throw is going to be incomplete. And this drive is almost over before it began thanks to a great defensive effort. Sack on first down, followed by an incompletion. One more good rep, and they get off the field. The Ravens on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and 17. Now it's Jackson. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. Unsuccessfully. 
fourth down, and out comes Jordan Stout here to punt. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And it'll be Dolphin football. Miami's offense set and ready to go. It's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. Two and the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. He'll look to Mostert to start things out. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. That's a really good gain right there. They pick up five yards halfway to a first down. The only problem now in the huddle, everyone's going to want to touch the football. Be a lot of chattering now because they've seen that they can move the line of scrimmage. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. From the gun, it's Tua. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. So the completion good for just three. And that'll leave him with a third and two. Here's Tua. Completes it to the tight end, Smythe. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down, and he's going to have it by plenty. Able to get eight yards there on third and two. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Two and now on first down. That swung out to Mostert. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. It'll be a gain of five at its second down. Two are going to throw. Got his man, Robbie Anderson. And he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. That looked like a pretty good route combination there because you've got to find a way to clear the guy running the drag because when you do, you just put the ball on him and then let him run. Yeah, he's got some space. First down now, but that clock rolling. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. And that is incomplete. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and ten. Actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. So line of scrimmage still the 39 on second and ten. Looking to pass. Tua. And he comes back with one complete. And he'll be taken down here just shy of the 30. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense. And guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. Tua sets up to pass it. Got a man. It's Waddle complete. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. 
A first and ten here, and you know, if they could just get three out of this, something about whittling it to a one-score game at half that might provide a psychological boost. Flush to his right. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. You know what I like about that play? He didn't try to do too much on first down. He took what the defense gave him, put together a solid gain to bring up second and manageable. Now they have a couple of plays to pick up just a few yards and a new set of downs. Throwing again on second down. Tua. That one complete to Anderson. And they've got this down to about the 12-yard line. Now the offense will burn their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Throwing now is Chugavailoa. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. He was out there waving his arm, saying, throw it here, dropped it. Not a good look. Well, all I can do is just look at him with contempt on that one. As a defensive back, I'm saying, not as an announcer. <laughs> just like, really? A little bit of a diva look, isn't it? Yeah, very much so, because I think what happens is he just had too much time to think. He's wide open now. Here comes the ball, and he doesn't concentrate and drops it. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Now here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. They're putting together a drive here in the final minutes of the half, but the coverage has been tight all game long, and they certainly want to keep them off the scoreboard here. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Two and a throw again. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he will not be able to get the first as he can get this only down to the five. So we'll reach halftime here in a 10-point game. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. First, though, time for a check of the next-gen stats from that first half for Miami. And despite the fact that they're looking up at a double-digit deficit at halftime, they were able to move the football through the air in those first two quarters. Meanwhile, for the Ravens, they, too, did throw the ball as well as they would have liked. And I think both teams would say there's room for improvement in the second half. All right, Coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Dolphins down on the scoreboard, but they'll have it first as we get going in this third quarter. And the half will begin with a touchback. Out comes the Dolphins now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. They've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. It's a first down, his fourth catch of the game after having three in the first half.
going to the air. Tug of Iloa. That one caught by Tyreek Hill. And he'll be tackled on the other side of midfield at the 46-yard line. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move, first and 10. Now Tua. He'll get it once more into the hands of Hill. And he's gonna get this one down to the edge of the red zone. The extra effort after the catch makes it good for a gain of 26 and also a first down. My goodness, they've come out locked in on this drive. Play calling, execution, they are fully in sync. Three straight passes, three first downs. They're moving the ball downfield almost at will. This defense really struggling to find answers. You know what we need, baby. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And he'll be marked down right at the 15-yard line. So a decent gain there, but not their fourth consecutive first down like they had on the first three plays. You sound almost disappointed there. You want to fire the offensive coordinator on that <laughs> one or what? <laughs> They'd gotten into a rhythm. I thought they were just going to keep going. Well, almost a win for the defense, but if that's your win, you're not doing very well right now. Five yards remain on second down. A run with Mostert up the middle. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Well, so far, this game has gone the way the defensive coordinator had hoped. They've dictated things. They've not let them run the ball very well at all. They gave up a nice game there. I doubt it'll back off their confidence. They've played so well throughout this entire game. On third down, here comes Mostert. And he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. From the gun, he'll hand this off. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. And no more. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Second down and goal, Tua. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. That was a touchdown if he could have hung on. Instead, it was a well-timed collision to jar that one free. Well, they've been so good on third down all day long. Can they convert another here on third and goal? He'll drop to throw. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Fine work by the Baltimore defense to help bring up fourth down. Another good drive, Charles, but it looks like another that might end in a field goal try. They've made some nice plays. They've given themselves opportunities. But as you noted, another field goal attempt coming up. And that's not how they want to end drives. They've got to figure out what's the final touch that they need to push it across the goal line. Yeah, still yet to find the end zone. Sanders' kick is good. And they will cut the lead back down to a touchdown now at 13 to 6. So they were facing the deficit coming out of the locker room at intermission, and at least they're able to get the field goal to cut into that deficit. 
Yeah, now your offense feels pretty good about itself, right? A little bit more up to speed coming out of the break. You turn to your defense now and say, hey, we got three there. We're chipping into the lead. Can you help us out? Hold them. Let's get the ball back for us. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. Fielded right around the eight. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. The Ravens offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game. First and 10 here. The drive will commence with a run by J.K. Dobbins. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Well, in every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. To throw on second and six, Jackson, it's caught, back up. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Now Jackson. Give him a couple on the scramble. It's second down. Brandon, once that one broke down, there were only so many options left for him to take. Fortunately, only first down. So he smartly got the yardage he could get and didn't worry about trying to turn it into a bigger play and end up taking a bigger loss. Here, they hope they can regroup and get something different going here on second down. From the 38, Jackson to the sideline. Wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it, but he is able to keep the feet in bounds. Now a pause, and there's an injured Raven in need of some assistance. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. The Dolphins bring on an extra defensive back on third down. To throw is Jackson. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. 23 yards on the tuck and run. And Brandon, this is the time of the game when Jackson could really take over. He's got the defense's legs a little bit tired. He's got them on the run. Yeah, this defense looks gassed, and you're exactly right. Second half with the lead. This is when Lamar Jackson seems to thrive. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 37-yard line. Here's a give to Dobbins. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. Here's Jackson to throw. 
And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 18. 12 yards to pick up there. Good for a Raven first. Facing second and short, that gives you a chance to go for a bigger play through the air. But I think he said to himself, why don't I just handle this one? Got all the yards you needed and then some and made that snap a huge success. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Jackson going to give this one to Edwards. And he'll take it from the 18 to the 15, a gain of three. Not a big run, not an explosive run, but they've held the ball for plenty of plays on this drive. They're just trying to impose their will on the defense right now. And now Jackson will look to throw it. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. In the red zone, precision is the watchword. If the throw's a little too early, too late, maybe off a little bit, going to be a good chance that any attempt is going to be a contested one, and that one falls incomplete. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Now it's Jackson. And he comes back with one complete. And in for the Ravens touchdown. Devin DuVernay, a 15-yard touchdown grab. And the Ravens have taken a two-touchdown lead now. Circle that drive because that might be one to remember. Well executed to give them a little cushion. Well, let's take it into the boxing ring. You talk about them commanding it, keeping the fight where they wanted to, whether it was in the center of the ring or putting them on the ropes because it was jab, jab, jab. And finally, the haymaker to put that drive away. Tucker with the extra point, and the lead now up to 14. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive, and it's capped off with a Ravens touchdown. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And this will be a touchback. Deciding not the Dolphins offense now ready to go back out onto the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot. When you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. It's Hill complete. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Up the middle they go with Mostert. Four yards the pick up, first down. Now that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork and add in a little bit of power, and you find a way to pick up first downs. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Again, they'll run it with Moster. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Well, sometimes as a running back, you've got to be able to improvise when the hole's not where you expect it to be. But in this case, 
there wasn't any improvisation that he could do that was going to work. Kind of like if you're trying to be a comedian on open mic night at the improv and you run into a tough crowd. On second down, Mostert. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. But now they're in a spot that every team tells us when we have our production means they don't want to be in third and long. And that's because those back-to-back -back running plays just didn't accomplish a whole lot. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Tongue of Iloa working out of the gun. He sets to fire deep. And it's knocked away and incomplete. So one first down on that drive, and that's it. Forced to take the deep shot on third down and couldn't hit it. Now they have to punt this one away. The Dolphins will send out the punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. Fair catch called for and made at the 16 or maybe the 17-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Ravens, they'll take over. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? I mean, they score here, especially a touchdown, it's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, the fact you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. That burst good for 20 and a first down. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Throwing now, Jackson on first down. And bringing it in right side here, Beckham. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. Partner, I like that they're staying aggressive on offense because to me, this drive is what is known as a put away drive. You score here, that might put this one to bed. I like the fact that they're playing with confidence and not playing with fear. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Jackson slings it to Anders, and it's complete. The tight end has it. And he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. There's a completion to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands. Speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? Off the play fake to Dobbins, here's Jackson. He's got his man downfield, that's Bateman. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the five at the six. 33 yards that time. Boy, another big play late here for an offense, Charles. It certainly has had its fair share of big plays. Coverage has been a problem all game long. And I would say that going along with that has been confidence. Because even if they had the right coverage, they've still dented them. And now it's been a real issue for them during this game. Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. Play action. It's Jackson. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. Here's Jackson. 
his throw is going to be incomplete. Coaches talk about it all the time. Players talk about it as well. Excellent job staying disciplined in coverage and making that stop. Inside the red zone, every stop like that could be preventing a possible touchdown. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. And Jackson throwing once more. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a hole. He opted to go with a scramble, gets two yards, and now it's fourth. So Jackson will head to the Ravens' sideline, and on comes Justin Tucker for the field goal try. This to make it a three-score game late. Tucker's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So that almost certainly the final piece to this puzzle, a three-score lead. I don't think there's any coming back from there. But you know normally I'd get on you for giving up on the game right here, but I do think you're right in this case. This late in the game, two scores is tough enough. Three, I'm with you. That seems out of the question. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. From the six. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. And the complexion of this one has really changed a fair amount. That last field goal makes it a three-score game, so they need points in a hurry with time dwindling in the fourth quarter. Two and the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their own 23. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. As this one moves towards its conclusion, another incomplete pass there. Thoughts on the secondary? I mean, they seem to be pretty effective in this one. Yeah, I thought that they've been absolutely outstanding. I mean, their job is to prevent touchdowns, and not a single touchdown is going on the board against them. Of course, they want to make it a total shutout, but hey, if you don't give up touchdowns, you've got a heck of a chance to win. And he'll be stopped up at the 26 after a gain of only a couple. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C in completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. Throwing his tongue of Iloa on third down here. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. They'll wind up losing three here on the play, and that's going to make it fourth down. I love the intelligence the defense just showed there. Read their keys, saw the screen developing, ran to it, and smothered it. What a third down stop by them. Fourth down, fourth quarter, here's Tua. And going deep for Hill. And it's incomplete, they cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Dolphins can't convert on fourth down. And the Ravens get the football back and in great shape. Well, at this stage of the game in the second half, down three scores, I guess they felt like they needed to push. And let's face it, with this deficit, if they give up another score here after they didn't get it, does it really matter? Right. It really doesn't. They had to go and try and make something happen if they had any chance of winning this game. On first and 10, it's Dobbins. Knifes his way forward here, but just three yards on the play, second down. Well, that's a pretty good drive starter right there, and I don't know, partner, if you're even thinking about sitting on the ball right now. They may just want to run their regular offense. In plus territory, and, and as an offensive coordinator, you don't want your team to go into a shell, do you? No, you really don't, because as soon as you take your foot off the gas, 
it's real hard to put it back on and mash it because once everyone's emotions come down, hard to start them up again. So I think he may want to keep them cranking high right here. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it's going to make it third down at six. Back-to-back -back runs. I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. And this offense on third down today, five out of nine thus far. This will be third and six. Another run here with Dobbins. And this won't do it. He needed six. He only got halfway there. Well, this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stuffed them for almost no gain. They're going for it with Dobbins. And boy, is he close. Did he get there? No, they're going to say he's short of the line to gain. The Ravens go for it, but come up empty. And the Dolphins' defense is able to hold. So we were looking at each other up here in the booth when they went for that, saying, oh, wow, talk about trying to add insult to injury. Some teams are just like that. You know, some philosophies, some coaches are like, look, when I got a chance to put some more points on the board, I don't care what the situation, I'm going to do it. And they're also the same coaches as a general rule that if someone does it to them, you won't hear people protest out of them. That's just who they are. Tongue of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their own 13. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Looking left sideline incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Looking to pass, Tua. Now they go screen, it's complete. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. Here's Tua. This one incomplete. Probably should have been picked. A little nonchalant with a throw to the safety valve, but it's fourth down. But at this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense, they're just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. And yeah, the punter Bailey on now as he sends this one away. Fair catch called for and made at about the 32-yard line. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. Well, the win for them at this point seems pretty assured. I mean, still a decent amount of time left here in the fourth quarter, Charles, but you got the football, you're up three scores. They have to be feeling really good about where they're at. I love your observation skills, partner, because I think you saw them charge onto the field, fired up about another chance to get into the end zone. Looks to me like this group is ready to crush any hope left on the opposing sideline, and they want to do it with some gusto, too. They'll start on the ground with Dobbins. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Ten yards there to start the drive and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. The running game continues to be a big part of their success here early in the fourth quarter. And with those types of runs, that tells you they feel very confident in their running game. They feel very strong at this stage of the contest. And they want to keep doing exactly what we saw there, running the ball down their throat. Edwards now on first and 10. And give him about five as he gets this up to the 48-yard line. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. Second and five.
Now a handoff for Dobbins. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. 58 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. Well, I don't think there's any question, Brandon, at this stage, the stop troops, the defensive guys, they've got to use their three timeouts here. They've got to stop them and get the ball back. Yeah, if you're in that two to three score deficit window that they're in now, you got to get it ASAP. Yeah, no doubt about it. Stop them, use your timeouts. Easier to move the ball on offense without timeouts than to stop them on defense without using them. Right back to Dobbins on first. And he maneuvers up the middle for three. And it's second down. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. On second down, a run with Dobbins. And he takes it down to the 40 with a pickup of four. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. They'll go again with Dobbins. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and ten. Jackson on the give to Dobbins. And a hard working run here as he's got it inside the 20, down to the 17. A big one there for the Ravens. It goes for 18. Starting to look like this drive, it may be the final nail in the coffin. Well, this is why you work out so hard, right? This is why you spend all that time in the offseason. This is why you have those OTAs and mini camps for these situations, these scenarios, to run someone into the ground and secure a victory. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. A give up the middle to Dobbins. And a loose football. And to the 12, that's where it stops. The return is halted at the 12-yard line. In today's NFL, most teams don't have as many goals for the game like we used to have where you checked off your boxes. But zero turnovers, that, that's a universal. And while it won't likely cost them in this game, they're going to regret the fact that they cough one up here. Yeah, their first blemish. They had mistake-free football prior. And now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. Now, the question, was the knee, in fact, down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. Yeah. 
So the final seconds tick away in this Baltimore victory. And they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through. And they closed them out with a big-time performance down the stretch.